Good morning. Good morning. So we have a special set of readings today for a very special person. And we got a special guest along here. I, I mean, guest is not the right word because guests sound like somebody from far away that uh, is kind of just stepping in for the day. But actually this person is here all the time. And, but you could say probably a guest on the sunrise stroll and chat because that doesn't happen every day at all. So here we have somebody this morning for the Feast of St. Good Mary morning. Magdalene. Good morning. It's lovely to be here. I'm Celine, Father Raymond's sister, and it's a great joy to share about Mary Magdalene this morning. And uh, we look at the readings assigned for today and there's a lot in them that we could just go on and on for hours. But if we pick out certain moments in this uh, scripture, we can see that uh, in the Psalm, for example, the, um, the response is, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. And this is exactly the experience of Mary Magdalene. She was thirsting for the Lord. And like the, the um, first reading says as well from the Song of Songs, uh, she was searching for the one her heart loves. So deep down in our heart, all of us have this yearning for God. And then she's, the, the, the Song of Songs says she couldn't find him. So Mary was lost in many things, maybe. We know that she had seven demons tormenting her for a long time until Jesus set her free. But her heart was yearning, yearning, yearning. And this is what the Lord sees in us, our search, our dire search for him. So we should never give up on following what's inside our heart. That's that deep, deep desire of fulfillment, of joy, of peace, of encountering the Lord of our lives, our creator, our redeemer, our restorer. And, and this is what Mary did. I think she persevered for a long time in the search. And the Lord was searching for her. So as Augustine, the great Augustine says, you know, I was searching for the Lord, but he was, he was out get, looking for me too beforehand. And what a wonderful thing is when the two searchers meet. And this is what happens when Jesus sets her free. And I like to think of Mary Magdalene at that moment as if it were taking the reins of her own life and riding her own horse for the first time. Such a beautiful experience to know that uh, this search is in a way it's over, so it continues all our lives to continue searching more deeply for the Lord and his uh, work in our lives. But um, it's a brief moment of a turnaround. And I think there is where Mary um, has experienced God's mercy. And that's the first step. When we experience mercy, then we tend to be more merciful ourselves. And so if you go back through scripture, you'll see, for example, back in the day, you see Joseph, the brother who was about to be killed. And then one of them said, well, why don't we just sell him to the Egyptians? And he probably felt at that moment, well, there's mercy there. Because I didn't get killed. I was about to be killed, but I wasn't killed. And he goes to Egypt and he must have reflected on this a lot. Then he gets an opportunity to do the same for his brothers. And he, he is a great ambassador of mercy for the chosen people of God. And they all feel tremendous relief when he forgives them, when he restores their dignity as his brothers and uh, life goes on. And we also have this um, beautiful experience with David. When he was um, a young man, he knew that the Lord's hand was over him, saving him from the lion, saving him from all the perils of being a shepherd in, out in the wild. And he leaned on this to go forward towards Goliath and won that battle. And then we see him become king. And the moment comes when he himself falls very deeply. He makes mistakes, but then he knows that God is merciful. Unlike Saul, who immediately excused himself when the prophet challenged his conscience, 
David does it. He says, I have sinned against the Lord. And he writes the beautiful psalm, have mercy on me, O God, in your immense compassion, blot out my iniquity, cleanse me. Wash me, I'll be whiter than snow. And he goes up a step from Isaiah saying, though your sins are red as blood, I'll make you white as snow. Now it's the case, you wash me, I'll be whiter than snow, because he knows not only does God restore us through mercy, but the Lord brings us to a whole new level of interaction with him. And Mary Magdalene has this same experience, and she becomes an apostle of mercy, an ambassador of mercy. And everywhere she goes, she will tell the good news so that others can also know what God did for her, he will do for you. What the Lord did for, for each one in the Bible, he is telling us through the scripture that he wants to do that for us too. He wants to lift us up from wherever we are and set us our feet on, on rock so that we can go forward in our lives. And this is what Mary did all her life. So I think it's a beautiful, a beautiful um, lesson from today's um, Mary Magdalene for us to look back over her life and say, yes, that's really the essence of her life became the, uh, to be an apostle of mercy, apostle, um, a messenger of God's mercy and apostle to the apostle. So anyone who's trying to follow the Lord can look to her and she'll actually teach us how to to receive that mercy more deeply and how to become a messenger of mercy in our lives too. Beautiful. Beautiful thoughts. And the final one is when she, uh, at the resurrection, when she sees Jesus and finally realizes in that flesh, when he says her name, Mary, and she turns and says, Rabboni. There was no doubt because no one says her name like he does. He's the one who called her into existence. He called her out of the bondage. She knows his voice. And she, she immediately jumps right into the reality and accepts the truth of the resurrection because it's enough to hear his voice that she so trusts. And what a beautiful morning for us to think of um, each new day of the sunrise. The Lord is rising up in our lives and showing us the way. And it's over to us now to um, listen to the Lord, his message of love and mercy, and to also follow the path and uh, that he's leading us on. Because all of us have a, a journey ahead of us still. No matter how old we are, as long as life lasts, we are all on a journey. And the Lord is inviting us forward. So let's um, ask the Lord today, Lord, make me your ambassador of mercy. That fe feeling your mercy in my life, I may show mercy to those around me in my family and my circle that all fits into the the great uh, the great uh, original commandment in deuteronomy to love the lord with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength yeah. sure. that, that search for love i heard a commentary this morning uh, from uh, father else uh, a german priest and he said that she is like a patron of all people searching for love. Beautiful. All people, um, mm. and also in the frustrations along the path in the search for love, if we make mistakes when we're uh, cooking or when we're, when we're writing our letters for the first time in kindergarten or when we're running a company, uh, all the mistakes that can also be made on the path of love and she is, in that sense, a triumphant person. Uh, the, the triumph is complete in, the, in her life. Um, the triumph of love, despite all the heartache and all the issues she might have had that are not described exactly what they were. There was, she must have had some major, major issues uh, to be put in that term of seven demons. Sometimes, uh, well, I, I'm going to skip that today because today the gospel text stays on, on that encounter with Jesus. I encourage some people to, if you're interested to, you have the text of the Song of Songs and just click on the, on the, the scriptural reference itself for that and get into the original text and continue reading it. 
uh, the, the liturgical text always takes a snippet, uh, takes a small portion because the idea is to be exposed to it, to see the connection with other parts of scripture, to have some commentary on it so people can get a little leg up to ride that horse like Salem was mentioning earlier. And so it doesn't give you all the text, but it's interesting to continue reading that text because it also says that she's holding on, the lover in the Song of Songs is holding on to her beloved when she finds him, clinging to him. And in, um, in the Gospel, Jesus says, don't hold on to me, which is an interesting play off that. It's kind of a, a part of the, the background scripture there uh, from the Song of Songs is, is helping us to understand this word of Jesus. And we have that, that uh, second reading is very strong. Uh, why don't you just walk along there, Sinai? Um, that second reading is very strong because it's, um, it's um, talking about us being a new creation. So the redemption of love in the human being as a new creation. And that path for there is in practice is mercy. How many frustrated experiences of lovers in families with parents and children, between spouses, generations. I love that thought this morning, the, a, pa a patron, like a model, an example, an inspiration for dealing with frustrated love, with hurt love, with our own failures and mistakes. I love that thought Celine had now about mercy, that. Each experience of mercy makes us more capable of being less self-excusing and more, uh, how would you say, more open to, more spontaneously open to, to mercy and to trusting in God's mercy. You want to comment this little set as to finish up, Silly? Yes, well, I, I love the fact that Mary Magdalene has a basket in her arm and you can see the, the loaves of bread and there's a half one here because the other half is in her other hand. She's handing it to Jesus. So you have the breaking of bread, but above all, you, you see how simple was a gesture of service for the women of the gospel. So she's giving him a piece of bread. And what does the Lord give us? The bread of life. And the Samaritan woman gave the glass of water and he wants to give us the water that springs up to eternal life. So everything we do for him from our basket of our talents, our gifts, when we share them, he is storing up a treasure in heaven for us that we will not even believe when we get there. We'll be blown away. And so this is like what Mary did and teaches us to do, to take all those gifts and talents and share them and go out and bring the good news to everyone. So I think we leave it like that, people. We'll take our little selfie here with Mary Magdalene and Jesus as the great moment of today. And it's great to have sailing along for this commentary this morning. God bless you all. See you later, alligators. God bless. Thank you. Oops. There we go. Okie doke, people. See you later. Maybe just give you one more moment of sun, sun here, sunlight, sunshine. It's right there behind Duke and Altum.